Today, we're talking about the Endorphin Shift versus the Ride 13. miles, 8 minutes, 52 seconds from my 173 beats per minute, at least according to my Koros watch in the endorphin shift for today. Today was a really chilly day here in New Vienna, Iowa. Temps were in the 40s at the start of this run and it even affected the life of my GoPro. So there's not a ton of running footage for today, but fortunately I went on the exact same run the day before in the ride 13. I do have plenty of footage of that. I went with both shoes, the same exact run two days in a row so I can compare them head to head. But before I get to my thoughts on those two shoes, I do want to go over some disclosures. The Ride 13 is a pair of shoes that was sent to me for the purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for it. Uh, Roadrunner Sports sent it to me. Uh, and the Endorphin Shift is a pair of shoes I purchased with my own money. However, in either event, I'm not being paid by anybody or being reimbursed for any purchase price. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. And on another programming note, I'm trying to talk a little bit quieter today. It's super early in the morning. I I wanted to shoot this video, at least this talking portion yesterday in the afternoon, but it started raining. So I have to shift that shooting schedule to like 4.30 in the morning. So try not to wake anybody up today. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about the Endorphin Shift versus the Ride 13. Now with the Endorphin Shift, we've got quite possibly the tallest shoe that I've ever run on and it's full of power run foam. They've got 34 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot of the shoe with a four millimeter drop, leaving you with 38 millimeters of stack height in the heel. It's just a gigantic shoe. And all that comes at a price of weight where you're coming in on this shoe at 10.1 ounces. Now, in order to keep that shoe moving, Saucony is really utilizing what they're calling speed roll technology, where it's designed so that way it doesn't feel like a 38 millimeter stack height shoe and it doesn't feel like a 10.1 ounce shoe. And I actually think it works really, really well. It's very surprising. It doesn't feel like there's like a rocker in the forefoot. Uh, there's, so it's a little bit different in that sense. Uh, it reminds me of some other shoes that I've also run in this year and I'll get to that towards the end of this video. But first, I want to talk about the Ride 13 and what it's bringing to the table. The Ride 13 also has an all power run midsole for this year, and I just absolutely been loving it. It's got 24 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot and an eight millimeter drop, giving you 32 millimeters of stack height in the heel. So plenty of cushion both in the forefoot and in the heel. I've really been loving this setup here. Even though it doesn't have quite as much stack height as the Endorphin Shift and not quite nearly as much stuff happening in the upper as the Endorphin Shift, the Ride 13 comes in at 9.7 ounces. Let's talk about how these two shoes are similar and how they're both different. Both of these shoes are really great daily trainers, meaning they're pretty versatile. They can do a little bit of everything. They can do your long run, they can do your regular runs, your easy day runs, your recovery runs, and they could even go a little bit faster if you wanted to, although they're not the best necessarily at that. The other thing is they both have power run midsole foam technology in each of them and they're all power run midsoles. And both of these shoes have a hint of stability. When What I mean by that is on the interior side, like underneath the arch, it's just a little bit stiffer and that should help for those over pronators. If you just want a little bit of extra protection from that heel kind of turning in as you're hitting your foot strike, you can usually see it on like a sock and a shoe because they put a different color on the rubber outside, uh, on the outsole, and that's kind of where there's a difference. And here you can even see in terms of the shaping of the, the foam that they have here, that it's a little bit different than the shaping of the rest of the midsole foam. On the Endorphin Shift, you've got that and more with this giant TPU kind of heel cup slash cage. This digs down all the way into the midsole foam, and then you've got that kind of like 
Saucony's signature X marks the spot over here for where the midsole foam is a little bit stiffer. And in this case, they've also added a much more uh, rigid piece of rubber. Their XT900, I believe, formulation of rubber is what's in here to give that, that extra sense of stability. Although it's not technically a stability shoe, I would say though that of the two, the endorphin shift is a little bit more stable and a little bit more of that stiffness and rigidity in that part of the midsole. So what is it like to run in each of these two shoes? Uh, the power run that's in the Ride 13 makes for an incredibly smooth ride. Uh, th that is also coupled with the fact that it's a roomier shoe, plenty of room in the toe box, and it's got an ortholite liner to make it really nice and cushioned with each step. And you're still gonna even feel that cushion as you're running as well. So it's not just a step in comfort and walking around the shoe store kind of comfort. You're definitely feeling that comfort as you're running. The Power Run does a really great job of absorbing all the impact of the road as you're running. And the outsole on the Ride 13 is a little bit thicker in terms of how much rubber is in there. And that does two things. It improves durability a little bit. It also enhances the ability of the shoe to kind of absorb road impact. It also makes it weigh a little bit heavier. And that's why I think that even though this is uh, far less amount of power run midsole foam in this shoe, that's weighing pretty similar to the endorphin shift because of all that extra rubber. And rubber's a little bit heavy. But the overall running mechanics of it, it's a great shoe that I like to take for more of my relaxed runs. Uh, if we're gonna go kind of on the speed pack spectrum and like your daily training, like your everyday run is right in the middle of it, here's some of your faster stuff. I think that the Ride 13 likes to be a little bit on the slower side of everyday. That's just kind of like its comfort zone. That's where I feel like I am enjoying the shoe the best. I'm enjoying all of those like comfort notes and I don't mind the weight at that kind of speed. The Endorphin Shift is a very different kind of shoe. Uh, whereas the Ride 13 is really roomy, the Endorphin Shift has a very snug upper. I think for this type of shoe, it's actually too snug of an upper. I didn't like how tight it was. I did feel like it was pinching like the sides of my foot in just a little bit. It was a big problem on my first run and subsequent runs in this one. I didn't quite have some of the foot problems with the snugness of the shoe, but I definitely still felt it and noted it as a potential issue there. I think that the upper material is gonna loosen up a little bit, but it's never not gonna be a snug shoe, if, if that makes sense. Um, the other thing about it is like everything about the shoe is just a little bit more rigid. A lot of that's coming from this heel cup and all this extra structure that they've got going uh, on here. The upper is stiff, the heel cup is stiff, the midsole foam, even though it's still power run, it feels stiffer both to squeezing it, running on it, uh, and with the different kinds of rubber that they've got in the midsole slash outsole here. Uh, it's just a more rigid of a shoe. On the other side of that rigidity is that there's a really kind of pleasant ping to the shoe. And that's kind of like the other word, I don't want to use like energy return or responsiveness. Uh, I feel like there's a little bit more of a ping or a bounce to this midsole foam than I'm feeling in the power run that's in the Ride 13. Whereas the Ride 13, I feel like everything's just absorbing a lot of shock, not mushy. I'm able to kind of still keep through the gait cycle really quick and nimbly. But uh, on the endorphin shift, it's a much faster kind of like ground response. Like you hit the ground and it just kind of bounces right back off and it's not necessarily absorbing so much. I mean, you are absorbing a lot of that road feel because, and it's almost to the, to the sense that I'm a bit disconnected from it because there's just so much midsole foam material in there, but I don't feel like it's like an absorbing impact kind of thing. So it's a little bit different. Um, that I really think that the speed roll technology is like a great way to describe the feeling of running in this shoe. And not in the sense that like the shoe is rolling. It's not like you're touching every bit of the shoe from the absolute point of the heel to the absolute point of the toe. But when I think of the roll and what does this shoe roll, is speed roll an apt term? I think it is because I feel like there's a lot of momentum in the shoe. Uh, I feel like I've been trying to shorten my stride up just a little bit the, the last couple of weeks. And I feel like this shoe definitely helps me with that. Uh, keep the my foot strike more directly underneath me. And I think that kind of like, once you start like moving in the shoe, then your momentum carries you forward and that foot strike just continues. It's kind of encouraging a little bit of a higher cadence, at least that's the sensation I got. I think part of that is the speed roll technology, which I think is just the shaping of that uh, midsole slash outsole, plus that 
pinginess of the midsole foam that you've going got going in here. So I feel like it just really encourages you to keep going. It gets that momentum rolling in a very positive way. I really like that. I think the best way that I can kind of explain what it's like to run in this shoe is to kind of compare it to two other shoes. That pinginess really reminds me of running in the Asics Evo ride in the sense that it wasn't the softest shoe and it wasn't like the fastest feeling midsole foam, but I felt like there was a momentum to that and there was a bounce right off the ground when you hit your foot down in that Evo ride. But because it's a little bit heavier, there's a lot more kind of like stuff going on in this shoe. It also reminds me a lot of the Pegasus 37. So if you kind of combine those two feelings, a pretty tall stack height shoe with a little bit of a pingy midsole to it and a lot of forward momentum, that's pretty much the endorphin shift. If we're looking at that spectrum again, and here's like your everyday training, like just a basic, do it all kind of shoe. Here's fast stuff and here's like super long, slow days, like your longest runs, you just wanna get those extra miles in. And your fastest run, you're really killing yourself on the track. I think that the Ride 13 skews a little bit towards the slower, more relaxed side. And the Endorphin Shift skews on the little bit speedier side. And so that's kind of where I would put those two shoes. So which of these two shoes do I prefer when it comes to the Ride 13 versus the Endorphin Shift? While well, the Endorphin Shift is a really different kind of shoe and it's very interesting in that sense. And while I do really enjoy that like pingy sensation, it's very pleasant. I do think that I'm gonna pick the Ride 13 as the winner in these two shoes because I think that for what the Endorphin Shift is trying to do, I don't like it, all those feelings in an everyday trainer type of shoe. I think this would also make a really good tempo day shoe if they could strip out a lot of some of the extra armor, some of the extra stack height, some of the extra just stuff. So for an everyday trainer, I think that the Ride 13 makes a lot more sense. It helps you stay at those everyday paces. It helps you stay relaxed. It helps you go easy on your easy days, which is exactly what you want for your everyday trainer. Both of these shoes can go a little bit faster. You can use them in a fart like if you wanted to. I do think the endorphin shifts a little bit better at that but neither of these shoes is great at picking up the pace for an extended period. So I think that with all that said, I think the Ride 13 is the better shoe in my opinion, but I imagine a lot of you guys are gonna really disagree and I'd love to hear about that in the comments down below. That's all I have for today's video, everybody. Hopefully you could hear it okay and I apologize for kind of like switching up shooting locations and all this stuff. It's been a transitional kind of summer, uh, but thanks for your patience and making it all the way to the end of the video anyway. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?